Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This will be a new series starting of how to car photography. So basically it's going to be everything from editing to gear to behind the scenes to the final photos. So this is my website here. This is just a little slideshow I have on my website. I'm just showing off some photos. So I hope you guys come along for the ride. The first episode will be right after this intro. So I hope you guys enjoy and I believe it's the one of how to edit. So yeah, we'll get right into it. I hope you guys enjoy this new series that I'm trying out. And if you like it or want me to continue it, have any questions, anything, please feel free to comment, like, subscribe. And yeah, let's jump into it, motherfuckers. Woo! Welcome, welcome everyone to another episode of how to car photography. And this is, I don't know, how to edit, I guess. <laughs> So this is an Instagram ready car photo that we're going to be doing. So first of all, I shot this photo in portrait, not landscape, because Instagram doesn't support landscapes. You got to split them to make that work. That's a different episode. We'll go into it later. Going to keep this one super quick and super short so it doesn't bore the fuck out of all of you. But basically what to do is I've obviously taken this. You can come into the cropping. Obviously you can auto level it if you want. I shot this pretty good. 4.5 is Instagram's main platform, but I like to do wallpapers on my stories and stuff as well, so I keep as shot. The settings here, I shot with ISO 400 at 32.8 millimeters, f2.8 at one of 100 shutter. The ISO was way too high for a shot like this, especially with a cloudy sky. Um, but as you can see, it's kind of a dark color and, you know, it's, it's nice. So what I always do is I like to zoom it in to make it kind of landscape so I can actually see the car. So this is the Corvette C8. This has just come out recently in Australia, and yeah, they're really nice. So we're going to keep it super short, super simple, super easy. Uh, first thing we do is we go into, I go obviously into the highlights. I drop them all the way down, and I bring those shadows all the way up. First of all, that's already made a dramatic difference. So now we can see the whole fucking car. And then this is when I go to the contrast. I might drop these whites. I might actually keep the whites like that play with the blacks a little but then come to the overall exposure and drop the car's exposure now as you can see in this there's a lot of information in our histogram i will go into another episode about that and explaining the histogram and all that stuff but for me personally this is perfectly fine just with those minor adjustments look how much that photo has changed it's probably already ready you know what i mean this isn't for a client this was just just in the car park of uh bathurst 12 hours that i shot and I thought, fuck, there's barely any C8s in Australia, so I had to get I had to get some photos for it. Um, clarity, as the car is already very sharp and very in focus, I can come into a hundred times, and you know you can see details. But since I shot ISO 400, you see that grain. I don't like that shit. We don't we we don't like that. So we come over here, remove chromatic, a B, a B, a B, you know what I mean. Come over here to the luminance, add a little bit of luminance, as you can see. Boom, she's gone now. Easy, done. So. Don't even worry about the contrast, it's nothing important. But yeah, so those are my settings there. I would come in, not zoom that much, but I would go about 33 times. 2.8, as you can see this focal point is obviously the front of the car with it being blurry at the back. So when you look, your eye gets drawn to the front of the car. The higher the f-stop, obviously the more that's gonna be in focus. So I come here, what do I want? Do I wanna put a fuzzy look on it? Hell no, because it's a nice, already aggressive car. So I wanna keep it aggressive. Very minimal clarity since it's rainy, it's already very aggressive, very minimal texture. It's just gonna add aggression and sharpness and clarity. Uh, vibrance, I always add vibrance because you need that and I might even get rid of some saturation. About 15, I like to keep them pretty close. If I add 20 vibrance, I don't wanna take away too much of the saturation. And then that's when I come down into, I don't touch tone curve, but obviously you can play around with it. You can go into this one and basically change this. This is a good way to explain it, actually. Lights are lights. No, highlights, lights, darks, shadows. That's how it really works. Oh, sorry, excuse me. All right, so with the colors, obviously, there's no reds in it, so it doesn't even matter what I do with these reds. So, obviously, I'm going to look at the main colors. There's yellows. Do I want the yellows in the photo? Maybe. I might go out and Photoshop those that out. Um, depending if I get bothered or not because this photo isn't for a client so I don't have to go over and above because this is just me playing around and for YouTube's sake um, so coming to the greens there's barely any green there's a truck back there but as you can see all the way up all the way down makes zero difference to the car 
so I don't even worry about it. The aquas. So aqua does play a massive important part in car photography. As you can see, I'm going to zoom right into this window. I'm not sure how good it is, but if you can see there's aqua tint on that window, if you get rid of it, it just makes it a little bit more. And look in the this subject here, right there, as you can see that it adds a little bit of more rainbow and color. So personally, depending on the photo and if there's aqua in the car, I'll keep the aquas pretty low to bear none of it because I don't want aquas in my windscreen. If you're using a CPL, you can cut rid of that reflection. I was using a CPL for this photo and I believe I used it I used it for the front of the car. This is why there's no real reflections through this area. Um, moving on, obviously, blue car. So this is where most of the color will be getting changed. So obviously, I want to keep it blue because it's a blue car. I want to come to the saturation. Do I want it a little bit more blue? That looks not bad. Do I want to make it a bit brighter with the luminance or make it darker? Darker looks stupid. Brighter looks okay. So I might even just have a look. You just play around with the sliders. That's fully maxed out. We don't like that. Always with photo editing, especially of cars, unless you want to do super creative, don't max out stuff. People, I see it all the time. People max out like settings or especially coming up here to the clarity and they just fucking launch it up there thinking that's a mad photo. But if you turn your, this is a good way to always check. Turn your face away. Look back at your image. What draws your eye first? what I always do and that's what a lot of other photographers and my mentors have told me um, but you don't want that you know you want to keep it subtle you want to keep it nice like picture your car in a magazine that's what you want you want you know you don't want it too crazy so you want to keep it as true to realistic as possible personally because if this was for a client they have a blue car and they know how aggressive it is. If you blow it out with heaps of sharpness where their eyes are like, oh, why is the road more sharper than my car? Why is the car look freaking yellow or aqua or whatever? It depends on what you're delivering as well. Now, there might be a little purple. As you can see, there's a tiny little purple bit of purple in there because of the blues. You can see it on the histogram as well up here. Watch that area. As you can see, it moves a little bit. And so... It doesn't really do much, but it fills in a little bit of color, so I might do that. And magenta, is there any magenta in it? Nothing. So I might even even touch the magenta and just leave it there. Come to the shadows. Now, since it's a blue car, foggy day, do I want to put a little bit of aqua in the shadows just to make it more bluer or not? So if I blow it up, let's have a look, make it dark. It doesn't really do much. And if I click shift... I can get this slider to see how much you know color we're actually letting into the road. So if you want, you can make this bigger or better. Personally, I'm gonna drop it down, keep it just about there. With the highlights, there's not really much, but you can, again, go to the blues, go to the purples if you want, you can do that, and then come back up here to the white balance, and you can change it. See, it just, it makes, lot of difference just by doing those subtle movements personally i don't want any of that i like it like that personally just like that so yeah I'll, okay i didn't know there was yellows in it but there you go i like it with the yellows that's it with no yellow adding yellow makes it a little bit more of a grayish sky it looks like add too much makes it you know yellow find that middle ground to make the clouds white and there we go you can have a scroll around on the balance personally it looks fine being in the middle I think it looks fine. There you go. That would be my final photo there in full screen. That's what it looks like. That's before and that's after. There's a massive difference. There you go. So just by doing those basic corrections, most of all that photo was just built by this section right here. Doing those basic corrections makes it go a far away. But there you go. There's my Instagram ready photo of the C8 Corvette. Hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope it was helpful. If you'd like to see more, smash that like button, let me know. Uh, and yeah, subscribe. Peace out.